Hello and welcome back to Coating Gaming. We are here for episode number six, I believe, of our Football Manager 2020 playthrough as 1860 Munich. Um, since you were last with us, a lot's happened. <laughs> as you can see, we are currently eighth place, nine wins, eight draws, seven losses. We are currently on the 15th of February. Um, quite a big gap since you last met, met us, which was... Only the 2-2 draw against Erdogan, which um, kept us in the job. I uh, played a lot of friendlies to try and get the match sharpness back up. We won one and lost two, but not drastically. We lost against Juve's under-23s 1-0, and then we lost against a Bundesliga 2 team, who are currently sixth, so quite, quite a good Bundesliga 2 team. Uh, only 1-0, and since then... In the three league games that I was going to play before meeting again, we won 1-0, 2-0, and then we drew 2-2 against Unterhaching, which we just can't seem to beat, I believe. I believe we drew against them before? No, we won. We won 2-1, but we drew against them on the return leg. It was televised as well. Uh, we weren't the home team, unfortunately. In today's episode, we face Rostock, and it was going to be the top of the table we were going to face. But they have slipped to third. Ingolstadt have slipped to third. But Rostock is still in 19th. Although they do come back, come off the back of a 5-1 beating of Grossa Spatch. So potential upset here. But yes, yeah, seeing as we've gone past the January transfer window, um, this is what is happening <laughs> i went a bit mental on the uh on the transfers so we have from the top sam hughes a 22 year old english center back from leicester um he is currently a three star player with four and a half star potential he might have a problem with injuries but if we go to injuries they're niggly injuries they're not the i mean his knee has been had a battering there the niggly injuries, but obviously if it turns out he has a problem with injuries, then we get rid of him. But the main reason I got him was because he's got 11 pace and 11 acceleration. Uh, next down the list is Antonio Ant 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 Antion Batiste, who is a ball-playing defender, lovable playing defender. He's six foot one, 10 acceleration, 9 pace, so a bit slower. Um, he is... Currently three star, potential to be three and a half star. He is a bit older, 25, but he enjoys big matches. He's very brave and he's a fairly consistent performer. He does need to learn the language, but that can come with the job. Next down on the list of midfielders now, we have Jordan Houghton. 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 From MK Dons. He's 24 year old. He is a deep lying playmaker or building midfielder or defensive midfielder or halfback. He can play pretty much anywhere. Um, he is three and a half star, four and a half star potential. Just a decent player for the money we are, we have offered him. Can we see what we have offered him? No. Oh, we can here, can't we? Yes. Um, so he's on two and a half a week, which is not too bad. We've spent pretty much all the money we had. Wage budget is currently a bit poorer, a bit worse for wear here. So we will get rid of the transfer budget. Minus £425 a week. Uh, next down on this is Michel Rocca from Sampdoria. Um, do love a Italian. Um, he is 24 years old. He's a Carolero or deep line playmaker. Basically, he was in coming in to potentially lower the loss of FCAM if we couldn't sign him. He is three and a half star, maybe four, and his potential is three and a half star or five. But obviously, we lacked the scouting budget at the start of the a transfer window so he yeah he comes in with a little bit of unknown about him then we have Maida Talal from Armians 22 year old attacking midfielder um, can drop back and play an advanced playmaker I've had a lot of people in my football manager career which hasn't spun that very long which started off as a as an attacking midfielder and then dropped back into the centre of midfielder and played as that Mazala role Mazala on attack role and they play quite well. They've got good finishing for the for the role as well. Um, he is three star current, four and a half star potential. Nice player, um, fairly consistent as well. 
he's a natural in a couple of positions, so he is a good one. Then we have Yusuf Ben Ali from someone there. He is an inverted wing. He's 25 years old as well, sort of trying to lower the average age of our squad. Um, he was a bit of a gamble because, as you can see, we can't really see a lot about him, but he is a winger on the left side, which is somewhat important to strengthen since I'm not going to renew the contract of Ivo. Um, he might be two and a half star, but he could be three and a half, and there's a potential to be four star, maybe five, which is pretty decent. Uh, next on the list from Monaco, which is another person on that left side, uh, Owen Mays. Um, he's a French 21 year old, inverted winger or inside forward. He is currently two and a half star, maybe three, um, but potential to be three and a half star, maybe four and a half star, which would be quite good for us. Um, strength and stamina make him a decent athlete, which is nice. He was pretty cheap, and it basically, I was trying to get anyone we could with the money we had to try and strengthen a lot. I was aiming for three star minimum as the current ability um, for a lot of the older players. The younger players didn't really matter that much as we tried to get Esteban Lepoul from Lyon, um, who was a poacher. Well, he would have been nice because he's currently two and a half star, but. Three and a half star, maybe four and a half star potential. He was getting, he was going to be very cheap. I was only going to pay him a thousand pounds a week. He was taking a pay cut, but then Leon decided to offer him a new contract, which is fair enough. Um, we have some outs. We have Zerice. He is joining Munster permanently for, if I can do it, go back, 55,000 pounds at the end of the season. We've got some other people as well. Um, I believe it's, yeah. We've got some other people as well that will potentially join other clubs. Um, if I look at him. Yes, yeah, so 30 grand, 30 grand for this guy if he plays two more matches. Uh, Berzel, if he plays two more matches, he goes as well. He was coming to the end of his contract there, so I had to get rid of him. 20 grand, which is fair enough. Um and I believe this guy has one as well, but he's not looking like... Yeah, if he plays 10 matches, 15 grand, it's not looking like he will actually go to Mannheim, who are th a ninth in the third league of the German division. But that's all our um, transfers. We can't really get anyone else in, but I will continue to offer players if we have the money. Um, I've offered new contracts to a lot of people. If we sort this by um, when it expires, Ivo's leaving... Gebhardt's probably leaving. Paul is leaving. Ryder won't come back on loan. I would have taken him for another season just to strengthen that defence a bit better. Um, I believe I've offered... Oh, no, I haven't offered Weber a contract yet. I was debating whether to. Um, I was going to because Ryder decided not to come back. Um, Bombman, I believe, is on a new contract. Yes, it's a bit of a jump, but he's on a new contract. Um, Lex, I don't believe I'm going to offer a contract, just because we've got um, we've got a couple of players, a couple of youth prospects on that side, on the uh, right side of the wings. He's probably not going to be needed. He's only three star current and three star potential, so he's at his potential, and he's just getting older and older. Uh, Viga, or Viga, I don't think I've offered him a contract. No, he will be leaving as well. Fcam um, is on a contract does get a bit of a jump um, but it's a three year contract so hopefully we can keep him for a little bit potentially sell him if we need to uh, you've got Klassen who is on a is going to be signing a new contract I've done a lot of this stuff at the end of the season um, because I don't want to pay them more now I don't want to get into debt but next season if we're going for a title push then it might lessen the blow uh, Karga I don't believe is no he's not on there Kinsvata I believe is I'm releasing as well. Yep. Uh, Obusu, I'm not going to cab back. He is a decent player, but I don't need him. Um, Johan is on a new deal at the end of the season. He is going to be probably the first choice um, player on that side. Or I have got this guy. He can't currently play there specifically, but he is quite good. He's 16 as well. Um, training quite nicely over the last few months. Uh, who else is there? Lang, I believe, is on a deal. Yes, he is. He's on a new deal in the season. Um, we've got a loaned player in. Sorry, I forgot about this. Um, Yon Etienne. 
he is a fullback, actually can play as a wing back support, unlike my uh, Steinhardt over that side. He got injured for a month, um, pretty much as soon as he came into the club, damaged foot. So <laughs> that was a good bit of business. Um, but if he gets back up to full fitness, he will probably be our first choice. Um, and that's it for the people who expire this year. There's quite a lot of them, but I, they're players I'm not going to need. If you just look at their ability, their three-star abilities or less, most of them. Um, obviously, Fcan is coming back for another three years, and Ryder won't come back. But they're not players that are going to help me in a title push next season, or at least a promotion push next season. So they aren't staying. And I, I don't really care. That frees up quite a lot of wage budget. If you look at how much um, how much wages I will save from just these players leaving, it's it's near on ten grand a week, which is good. I've then spent that ten grand a week on new contracts or new players. But we, yeah, it, it hopefully will be a good good start of the season next season when everyone comes in. But today we are playing Ross Stark in nineteenth. So let's get into the game. Um, our form is fantastic. We haven't lost in nine games, I think it is now. So our form is decent. Theirs is poor. We are favourites beyond belief. And so the team for today is going to be Sebastian in goal, Steinhardt, Raider, Weber, Schultz across the back, Erdman at defensive midfield, Efkan, Drezel. The three midfielders I've got here are by far, and the keeper, our best players on the pitch. It's a very good three. We've got Ivo on one wing, Lex on the other, and Steiniger up front, whose recent performances is a bit piss poor. Um, Johan had a very good game a couple of games ago. He scored two games in the win. There's only two goals um, in his good old inside forward, and then I put him at, at as a deep line forward, and he uh, scored as well in that game. Um, but let's get into it. Let's hopefully get another win on the board and go hurtling up this leaderboard. We are aiming to finish just outside the top four, I reckon. I reckon that'll be a good season. Top half, definitely. Uh, top top eight, I'd like to go for. Fifth would be perfect, and it's not too far away from us at the moment in time. Um, I certainly say Rostock have lost four of the last five games and I expect us to pile on the misery today. Sebastian is the only one that loves me currently. <laughs> Every time I say something, he loves it. Um, let's just get them in that position as well. We are at home, we're favourites, so we're going to stay on balanced possession. We might go to a balanced mentality. We could go to um, positive if we need to, but hopefully we won't as Weber picks up the ball from this opening highlight, but nothing goes. Right, we've won the ball back from their goal kick. Lex now picks it up back to Drezel. Now to Fkan. Schultz is making an overlap run. Can he whip it first time? He can. Saniga is there. Good defensive header. Lex now inside the box. He's going forward. He has a shot. And the keeper just manages to push it past the post. We are very dangerous from corners as Ivo is going to take it on this near side. We flicked it on. Fkan picks it up the edge of the box. Back to Weber. Ivo now potentially offside. No, he wasn't. He was good. But he does get tackled by their defender. We're piling on the pressure. Steiniger now picks it up on the near side. He floats the ball in. Lex picks it up. And again, another save from their keeper, Colk. Eh? Colk. And we are piling on the pressure with another corner now either to take. Aims for the near post. Doesn't quite reach a Munich head. But the first 10 minutes of pre uh, pressure was quite well there. Steinhardt has a throw in on the far side. And we're working it quite well between our midfield. Efgan tries to release Steiniger, but it's not quite a good ball. As, oh my god. Oh, that's painful. As Weber flaps his head towards the ball and completely misses it. As a start off by a bad ball from Efgan there. But Weber just goes, nope, I can't reach that. Ryder is on the back foot already, and we can't keep the ball out. And this is absolutely unacceptable as we're now just giving the ball away and they're killing us on the break the fact that that's not 2-0 is beyond me so we um, we'll drop the, the, the defensive line there try and stop this uh, counter attack 
before it happens, trying to stop them to have that much space in our half. As we potentially have a, have a break on, turns to nothing. Then they are suddenly putting a lot of pressure on us. Can we nick the ball back from them as they're playing nice, quite close control football? But Steinhardt has it now. Erdman picks it up to Drezel back to Erdman. Can he find a ball forward? Drezel again. F can now. Steinhardt on the overlap inside. Manages to pick the ball back up. Ivo is going the wrong way to goal. Edmund back to Ryder. He goes forward to Steinhardt. He does pick it up and back to Ivo. This is a very good part of possession. Steinhardt is through. It's the wrong goal again. And a yet again, this guy, I need a new striker. I need a new striker. Steinhardt is just not good enough. He scored like three goals in the season and it's just painful. He just can't score a goal. I know on this version of Football Manager, one-on-ones is, is very hard to score a one-on-one -on -one for some reason. Um, unless they're them, obviously. As they manage to pick their first goal up by a one-on-one. -on -one. But yeah, we just need a better striker. We need like a four-star striker to come in and just lead us at the table. Because currently, Efkan is our top goal scorer, who's having a 6.3 game. It's 30 minutes in. He might need to be substituted here. Steinhardt is now through on goal. Can he make it 1-1? One, one? No, yet again. He can't. As, did they have, a, have they got another player in their team called Ryder as well? As Ivo takes the corner from the far side. Erdman gets on the near post flick and it's 1-1. One, one. That was a great set piece there. The set pieces for us are actually quite effective currently. See how Ivo whips it in. Erdman gets in front of his marker. The keeper is in no man's land. And that front post corner tactic is quite nice. Fcan is having a bit of a bad game, but his rating has gone up by 0.1 now. As they have a deep free kick, which almost lands to a almost leads to a gold. But luckily it floated just over the bar. Steinhardt is having a piss poor game as well. Fcan has recovered from his poor showing at the start of the game with his stupid pass forward. Um, I'm going to aggressively say I'm far from pleased because I am not pleased there. Stanley is actually having a good game. But F can, if he stays on a 6.4, 55 minutes gone, he, he's off. We have got Gebhardt, I believe his name is. That can come in like for like. Is it Gebhardt? Yeah, Gebhardt. That can come in like for like for F can. So if he's not playing well, he'll be taken off. All right, they are playing quite nice football in and around our half. As they go wide, and there is a bit of an overlap here. Steinhardt does pick it up. Can we make a break now? Back Steinhardt to Efkan, to Ivo. Efkan is on the overlap. Can we find him? Ryder, Steinhardt, Efkan, Ivo. This is nice play football. Nice ticky tack here. And it's over the ball, over the top to Steinhardt. Can he score a one-on-one? -on -one? He bloody well scores a one-on-one! -on -one. <laughs> As I'm slating him the entire match, he goes and puts us 2-1 up. His fourth goal of the season. It's like a carbon copy of our first goal that we of their first goal over the top. Their defender can't reach it. Stanley goes through on goal and somehow he scores a one-on-one. -on -one. Just to prove me wrong about the one-on-ones not being effective in this game. But I, I think our cautious style of play is actually leading to more goals, which confuses me. We only sort of really do a ball over the top like that when it is on. Um, as can we at least put a, a tackle in here? As they're running through into our box, Steinhardt does manage to get it and it's back on the counter attack with Ivo. What can he do here? He decides to do nothing on the ball, but Efkan picks up the free kick on this near side. He whips in to Weber, who gets his second goal of the season, and it's 3 1 to 1860 Munich. This is more like it, much more like it against 19th. Fkan now playing quite well and we are somewhat just looking for people who are tired. Um, I think Erdman deserves a rest. We can bring in Vine, Vien, Vien. Um, anyone with a bit, uh, lacking in a bit of uh, Matt Sharpness will give a game here. Give a 30 minute run out as they have a corner on this near side, but it isn't anything. 
yeah, I think we might switch to playing cautiously and just try and hit on precise balls. Because we play cautiously against the better teams in the league and we have been winning, or at least playing a lot better than we were previously. But then it could just come down to form. As we're playing it quite nicely as well. We do go back quite a lot, but that's only because the ball's not really on. And then we just recycle possession. As we use the keeper quite nicely there. And it's one ball over the top. Ivo's picked up. Can he put Stein to go through? He can. He can't do anything here, but it's back to Steinhardt now. Over the ball to Lex. Over the ball, over the top to Lex. And he manages to make a save from the keeper. As it's coming thick and fast here. Drezzo now picks it up in midfield. It's over the top to Steiniger again. Can he score another one-on-one? -on -one? Nope, he cannot. How many one-on-ones does that guy need to score? I think I've seen th that's his like fourth of the game. He's only scored one goal. Weber picks it up and Ivo back to Weber. It floats the ball in. F can header just wide. I say just. It was quite quite far wide there. But the highlights are coming in thick and fast here. We just need to not concede. That was our first goal we've conceded in quite a while in, in professional in professional in um, competitive games. So I'm a bit annoyed we conceded it as we might concede a second, but Sebastian makes a good save from their striker. What's the have they made any subs they have? Right. Let's get him on the um, instructions. Bloody out. A crowd in the box there. We have half cleared it with Drezzel. Can we put pressure on him now? We can, just about. They go back all the way to their keeper. Which from a corner is like the best thing you can do. Push them back to their keeper and then just reset your defence. As they go a bit more higher tempo. Which could play into our benefit actually. They, they might be trying to do things too fast. As we're doubly closing down the, the goalkeeper, which is not needed. Steinhardt with a clearance now. Wind back to Steinhardt. Can he go over the top? No, he just can't do anything. But luckily their, their, um, their striker is a bit poor. Right, where can he play? Oh, he is, yeah. He is a uh, wing-back, right. Right, Klassen is coming on because Steinhardt just had a brain aneurysm while he was trying to play the ball. And they're going much higher tempo now. I will start wasting a bit of time here. We don't need to push forward that much. Steininger picks the ball up and Drezzel now to Lex. Can he release Steininger through the middle? Oh, he's made the run, but he goes back to Viga. Who does beat his man back to Drezzel. Back to Viga. Can we find an overlap here? Drezzel now. F can in the middle to Ivo. There is an overlap bottom left if we can find it. Klassan is there. He does find it. Can he get a ball into the box? Klassan. He can. Steiner goes picking it up on the edge of the box. Back to Drezzel. Back to Viga. Playing the ball quite nicely here. Steiner again. Through to Lex. Nice spin and a superb save from the goalkeeper. The text commentary at the bottom said it exactly how I was going to say it. As we go for that near post flick again, Drezzel picks it up. Ryder to Vane, Vine, Vien, whatever you, however you pronounce his name. We have a brush challenge or brush shot there towards the keeper, and they pick it up. Can we do anything with it? They are playing the ball quite fast, but they're playing it back to the keeper, and we're sort of sitting off. We're not sort of showing our shape to them, sort of in that rigid formation as defence. And they're just trying to find a way through us, which is nice. We've got all but one player behind the ball there. We will close him down as it, he goes through on goal. They have made all their 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 changes, so we'll change accordingly. And we're approaching the end of the game. We we'll frequently waste time. As there's a throw in on the far side, but it looks like we are going to pick up yet another win in this beautiful run of 10 games now unbeaten it will be. But we, it's, it's the greatest possible form you can come into facing third position in the table. As we emerge 3 1 victors. That was a very good game in the end. Um, will that show us now? Quality of possession. Uh, Bowling is now one appearance away from 
10 needed, 30k. I'm going to praise Dresden. But I believe that is um, 10 games unbeaten, which is a cracking start to face the next opposition of Ingolstadt, who is now second. So we will see you in that game. We are here against Ingolstadt. It's currently sixth versus second in the league. We have got a fantastic record coming into this. Ten games unbeaten. Um, Klassen is now injured, but Etienne has come back into training, which is good, so he makes the bench. Um, Grudiger had a fitness test on him. Um, but I think Ivo and Lex are currently playing well enough in the last couple of games to keep their place in the team. Um, potentially got... Where's the next game? That one, right. I will put him as available for the next match for 90 minutes. Just to get his sharpness up. Um, but that is pretty much it. The There's no changes in our team. Back The back line of Sebastian, Steinhardt, Ryder, Weber, Schultz... Erdman, Efkan and Dresel in the midfield. Ivo, Lex and Steiniger making our front three. And hopefully we are going to go cautious from the start. Custom Tiki Taka cautious. And hopefully we can do some damage against this team. They are playing 4-4-2, which is a formation we haven't quite faced in a while. Ooh, they're ninth. Go on. Ooh, don't move the keeper, thank you. Right, Efkan doesn't need the faith um, and we will do the usual I think him we need to always press right what can we do against second in the league cautious I'm gonna already drop that back a little bit I don't think we've got quite the pace in our um, defenders to play a sort of a, a normal defensive line and Jesus Christ um, is that a red? Is that a 20 second red card? Holy shit! Marcel Gulls has been sent off in the first minute. Holy crap. We might go to balance here. We could win this. I'm pretty sure they got a player sent off in the last game and we still lost one nil or something. But Weber picks the ball up now. Schultz on this side. We have got the man advantage, but they are pressing us quite well. Lex is going forward. He does cross it. Fcan is there, and it's just over the bar. Unfortunate attack there. All right, I'm going to say get creative. But don't want to go positive too fast. Stein Steinhardt with a free kick, far side. Fcan now picks it up. Back to Steinhardt. Can he whip another ball in? He goes to Ryder, but they pick it up. And they are now breaking forward. We have got enough players back. But we can't seem to stop the pass forward. As Ivo's pressing nicely there. We have got back into our shape now. But they are playing it quite well around us. Ivo picks the ball up and Erdman now. Can we release one of our forwards? He goes back to Ivo. Can we do the damage now on the break? We go to forward to Lex. He picks it up. He goes past one defender. Can he get a ball in? He goes back to Drezel, who does pick it up and has a shot from the edge of the D. And, oh my God, Dennis Drezel, second goal of the season, makes it 1-0 against second place Ingolstadt. That was just a nice, nice bit of possession. Nice bit of play from our players. Drezel picks it up and curls it into that bottom corner. Oh, that was beautiful. There is a highlight straight away after the goal, which worries me quite a lot. But I think we should now drop to cautious. We don't want to overextend ourselves a bit too much as they almost... Have, oh, Jesus Christ, there's many shots going on. Could be clear the ball. Ivan now picks it up and the break is on. Yeah, they are coming at us now. They've got a free kick in the wide area, but Lex does clear it. Steiner is not really on the move there. As they get a freak cross and it's, it's Dennis Eckhart's 10th goal of the season is double any of our players there and they do make it 1-1 one, one, which isn't the greatest they need to demand more from us we've now got a free kick far side starting to get on the end of it or near side I should say but it's over the bar and doesn't trouble the keeper 
they scored with their first shot on target. That angers me when it happens. But I guess they do have quite a good strike partnership either with the free uh, the corner kick. Far side Weber does get his head on the end of it, but can't make it 2 1 to Munich. As we go into half time, it's 1 1 against top second in the table. It's a bit annoying that they equalise straight away. It's time for everyone to dig in, give everything you've got tonight. We deserve to win this match. Let's go and get it. Oh, come on, lads. A bit more than that. There we go. That's sort of the motivation and happiness I wanted. Do we go back to... A draw here would be nice. But with, 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 with ten men on their side, we have to go. We have to go for it, surely. Let's show some passion here. Is there any changes we can make? Yeah, Ivo. All right, let's get Grealiga on the pitch. You know, I've got two wingers, which could work quite well in our advantage, to be fair. 70th minute's coming up, and it's not looking like we're gonna do we're not gonna do anything here. Let's get creative. Come on, guys. Uh, there we've got a free kick. I am going to go with a bit more width in our attack because they've gone quite narrow. But FKM with a deep free kick. Weber is there. And oh my lord, if they break and score here, I'm going to cry. There's one ball over the top. It's Eckhart. It's one on one. Sebastian is a lifesaver. But they have picked up the ball on the edge of the box. Ryder comes back and does clear it out of the park. <laughs> yeah. And we are under a bit of pressure here. They've got a corner on the far side. Can we get... They are wasting time. They're playing for this draw, I reckon. Yeah, nothing coming off the corner, but they have got a throw-in on the near side. One ball into the box. Sebastian picks it, picks it out of the air. Can we now go from our keeper into their box and score a winner here? This would be great if we could. Dresden on picks it up in midfield. He goes long to Lex. He picks it up and tries to beat his man. Ryder, we will ease off the... Jesus Christ. We will ease Ryder off the challenges. Erdman picks it up in the middle of the box. F can over the top. Schultz now will pick it back up. Back to Dresel. Playing it quite nice. Erdman, F can does a. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> There's a player <laughs> overlapping down the left. But holy. Crap, Efkan picks a ball out and just bangs it top corner. Oh my god, take a bow, son. This guy is scoring long range goals every game, it seems like. Obviously, not every game, it's only six goals in the season. But look, it was that outside of the boot. Oh my god, Efkan, you are by far the best player we've ever had. Uh, we might need to make some changes. Let's get the debutante on the pitch. And we get we'll get Vega on the pitch as well. Yeah, we'll get Vega on the pitch as well. We'll go with some defensive substitutions just to kill a bit more time. As we are three minutes or less now away from winning against second in the league. We've got to throw in at this side. We go back to our keeper if he can just waste the time a bit. Webber now picks it up. Erdman, we're playing through. I understand they've got ten men, but we are playing through second in the league here. Vega now picks it up. Lex on the overlap. We are just toying with them, not letting them get the ball. The Tiki Taka is beautiful. We have found our play style. It's Tiki Taka. It's got to be Tiki Taka. Why would it not be Tiki Taka? We did lose the ball there, but that should be that. We have played 30 seconds over the allotted time, and the referee has called an end, and we have just emerged 2-1 victors. Two long-range goals out of our, arguably our two best players. Against second in the league. That is fantastic. Very nice victory. Well done. Things are on the up here. And we have unlocked an achievement. Which is unbeatable. Which is. Your team was unbeaten in 10 consecutive competitive matches. Wow. That was great. Drizzle did have a fantastic game. Oh he's not prepared to go over the subject again. That's a bit annoying. Um, someone. Maya tracking Kaiser Slaughter tracking Lex. Fair enough. Ten games unbeaten. Look at that. We've conceded 
uh, one, two, three, four, five, six goals in ten games. We have shut the shop up, which is great. Now, where will we meet next time? So, we will meet against Halley and Colm. Two 16th and 18th, two very good, uh, very good, very beatable teams. But we play third, ironically, next, then eighth, and then fifth. So three tough games where you will join me in the Haller and Colm game. If you have enjoyed this episode, make sure to click the like button, comment and subscribe. If you do end up subscribing, make sure to click the notification bell to stay up to date with everything on the channel. But until next time, goodbye. <laughs>